Hey guys, it's Delora Devils here. Thank you for joining me for this week's quarantine crafting update. So we're going to talk about the tank top first. I actually found, finally, um, found a good way to stripe the colors from row to row, like to carry the yarn, I should say, um, from row to row. And where is it? It's on, it's on this side. Here we go. So this is where I was really overthinking everything and kind of mangled it a little bit. And then I just very simply started twisting them around each other as I as I switched. So I'd knit for two rows, and I would just take the two yarns, boop, twist them, and make one twist, and then continue going on. And it made this beautiful, you know, little seam right here. This is where I started doing increases and no longer needed to uh, stripe the yarns so that they wouldn't make variegated because that's why I wish I was striping for those of you who didn't see my last quarantine update I was striping two of the same balls of yarn so that I would get less of a pooling variegated effect and more of a you know evened out variegated effect which it's still you know pooled in places it's not completely pool free but it is certainly it is certainly much less pooly than what it was. This is the row that it was starting to pool and look like static on a TV screen. And then this is where I decided I wasn't going to let that happen anymore. Where I kind of um, mangled the yarn up a bit as I was figuring out how to carry the yarn over you can see right here, you can kind of see that there's something going on here. And then here, you really can't tell as much, hardly at all. And that is where I started doing just the simple twist around. So <clears throat> I only need to knit three more inches from this flower marker. So from here, to, to three inches is all I need left to knit. And then I start with the black border, the choker, and then the chains. Cause this is the, this is the knitted bohemian tank top. This will be the second like garment that I have done during this quarantine. So I also started on another pair of socks because I am a sock fiend. Now, these are not actually for me. These are a surprise for someone. So I'm really excited about them. I know that he is a size eight. I just really hope that these fit him. Um, I Anytime I'm knitting for someone and all I'm going off of is a shoe size and I don't have them to you know, to bother and be like, hey, try this on, try this on, try this on. Um, I just have to rely on shoe companies, actually. <laughs> uh, so if you type in U.S. men's shoe size fill in the blank, you will get charts and they will say foot circumference, foot length, different companies will contradict each other, which is probably why each company has their own sizing charts. So I just get a nice general idea of the circumference and the length. I, gosh, I am hiccuping. Anyway, um, I hope that it's not too long because I'm so used to making little socks for myself that I'm not used to making men's socks. So I am going to have to figure out a way to not completely ruin the surprise, but to let this person know that I'm knitting them socks so that they can try it on. Um, these needles are not the needles that I knit this on. I knit these with my trusty little DPNs. Um, but in order for this person to try this sock on, I figured popping them on um, circulars would be best. I'm seeing this person tomorrow, so I guess I'm going to be like, oh, hey, I have a surprise. They're socks, but you can't see them yet, and you can't have them yet. I just need to make sure that they fit and <laughs> hope that I don't sound like a complete weirdo. Anyway, 
This is a really cute pattern because this is some self-striping sock yarn, obviously. Um, I figured that the most fun pattern I could find for these would be chevron socks. There are a lot of chevron sock patterns, but the one that I found that would have the best foot circumference uh, for the guy that I'm knitting these for is from the chevron socks. Uh, by Mel Tran Designs, designed by Melissa Transtrom on Ravelry. So, I altered the pattern quite heavily, though, <laughs> and wrote it all down. Oh my god, I wrote it all down here, because it was quite a lot of finagling and experimenting, so I wrote everything down, because I am doing a toe-up gusset these look like the gusset exactly like the ones on my cuff down so these were knit from the cuff down and this is very easy to do whenever you're knitting from the cuff down you knit a flap and then you do short rows and then you pick up the stitches along the flap and as you go down the foot you do you decrease these extra stitches here so you get down well whenever you're doing from the toe up, because I started at the toe and I'm knitting up, um, you have to start doing increases on your heel stitches. And so, as you can see, you want to do your heel um, increases about two thirds of the way, two thirds to three quarters of the way up the foot. So, doing this completely on my own without a pattern was a little scary but I did it and I committed to it and figuring out the short rows this doesn't have as <clears throat> sharp of short rows as say like this one does this is these are very sharp short rows this short row as you see it's not quite as sharp um, perhaps I should have done more wrap and turn stitches and more rows in the actual short rows but I think it's perfect for a man's sock because men do tend to have more rounded heels and women tend to have more pointy heels at least my heels are pointed and the whole time I'm knitting this I'm like wow I really haven't looked at this guy's feet a lot <laughs> so I'm scared about whether these will fit or not um, so that's why I need him to try them on, obviously. Yeah, so you increase all these stitches as you go up, and then whenever you do the short rows, you start knitting across, and I always do a slip one, knit one um, texture on the back of the heel. This will make it so that it will never rub a hole through it. And it's just perfect. So from here, if this isn't an actual flap like whenever you're doing from the cuff down. As you go across and you knit the flap, you will decrease two stitches, turn, decrease two stitches, turn, decrease, turn, decrease, turn, decrease, turn, until you are back to the original number of stitches from before you started increasing down here. So this was 36 heel stitches. All of this mayhem, boom, back to 36 heel stitches. So. I have also started the second sock just to have something to do until tomorrow when I can either, um, you know, confirm or deny that they fit correctly. <laughs> um, hopefully I got it right on the first try. How magical would that be? That would like really go to my head though, I think. I'd be like, oh, I'm a magical knitter. Everything I knit just magically fits everyone, huh? I did like the super professional knitter thing and I even started the socks exactly at the same color so that the socks match and he doesn't have socks that don't match. They're going to match perfectly. I love to do that. I did not have to do that with my hand spuns because they're hand spun and I haven't knit with any self-striping commercial yarn in a while or any commercial yarn in a while that I've been kind of pampered by my hand spuns. I will say that the feel of my hand spuns is so much better than commercial yarn. <laughs> uh, eventually, 
Um, I will have to knit this person some of my hand spun so they can know true, true luxury. Because this is true luxury. The hand spuns are true, true luxury. Um, my other knitting project is this. This is my bus project for when I go back and forth to therapy. I need a little something nice and mindless and simple, but also not mind-numbingly simple. Super cute. I also wanted to stash bust. I have had this Patons lace since high school and I haven't done anything with it. So I was like, oh, this will be nice. As you can see, my cats have gotten to this. I, I should rewind this, but um, it's not a problem until it's a problem. So I'll rewind it when it's a problem. Right now it's not a problem. <clears throat> so those are my three knitting projects right now. And I have started the crochet project now. The crochet project that I was so excited about because I was going to knit it with my hand spun. Remember that one? Um, as I crocheted into this, it started to untwist my yarn. So now I know that if I am going to crochet with hand spun, I need to make sure that the finishing ply is a Z-twist. Because apparently crocheting untwists a clockwise yarn. No, 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 I did it wrong. This was finishing plied S-twist. So somehow crocheting untwists this yarn. So I need to make sure the finishing ply is Z. I hope that made sense. Even I get confused whenever I start throwing out Z and S-twist stuff. I got about this much into the pattern before I was like, oh, we've got a problem. With this being 100% merino wool, it is a little fragile when you take the twist out. So I was also concerned about all of the time and effort that you put into a project just for it to like literally fall apart so I didn't want that to happen so this is it as you can see I'm not very far along I just went to the um, yarn store today I never go to the yarn store for any one reason. I always have multiple reasons and multiple projects. And in this case, I had two, so that was cause to go. That's more than one, right? Two is more than one. <laughs> the first reason was this. I divided my yarn into 50 gram increments because this is a 100 gram skein. I only have this much yarn left. And I would rather like for this guy to have proper hand knit socks that go, you know, mid calf at least so the whole purpose is to keep you warm and guys do not wear leggings or well I guess if they wear skinny jeans but anyway most guys wear slacks so you kind of want a sock that goes up to here to keep your calf nice and warm you know for whenever the cold air shoots up your up your pant leg so have to make sure that they're longer so I needed to get a more yarn. I'm probably going to have enough of this left over to do myself some ankle socks. We'll see. I hope that I can. Then we'll be matching. And I'll probably do them chevron style just like his. Anyway, um, back to this. So I wasn't really sure what I was looking for, but I know I wanted a silk blend. And as you guys can see, it's so shiny. This is basically a 50-50. It is 47% silk and 53% wool. Perfect, right? And I am really loving this. This is the Julia. Julia, if you do a silent J on the second J. So far, it is coming out great. I don't know how I feel about the puff stitches. I never had to do puff stitches before. So I did have to do a YouTube tor tor tutorial, I had to watch one of those, on how to do puff stitches because I had no clue how to do them. Anyway, that's what YouTube is all for. That's what it's for. And it's super cute so far. I am looking forward to how this is going to be whenever it's done because I can already feel how wonderful this is and it's just gonna be well pretty and it's stiff enough I feel like to actually like really keep its shape once I block it 
they had some really, really soft uh, lace weights that felt a lot like what I had already used or tried to use in this case. And I was like, let me not make the same mistake. <laughs> so I got something a little stiffer since it is crochet. I've always preferred a bit of a stiffer yarn for crochet. Without letting this run too long, I do have an oopsie that I did when I was doing my spinning project. So we're gonna talk about the spinning project. I might have been watching a few really intense TV shows and I might have been not paying attention to my um, yarn width. And I might have also um, mind fucked myself for, for you know, lack of a better term, into spinning thicker, way thicker. Because I always spin thinner. That's like always been my problem whenever I try to spin for a specific project. I always end up spinning thinner than I want. Unless it's fingering or lace. So anytime I try to go above a fingering or a lace weight, I end up still spinning a fingering or a lace weight. In this case, I wanted a two-ply fingering, which was still bigger than what I'm used to. Um, <clears throat> I ended up with something between a sport and a DK, but that in some places is lace weight, and in some places is fingering weight, and in some places is DK weight. So this is a mystery to me. Um, it's obviously a thick and thin yarn. It's going to come out very highly textured, but it's definitely not <coughs> suitable for the Lestrange cloak. This is where grist comes in handy. My grist is around 1,500 yards per pound. My target grist was 2,100, and this is 1,500, so I'm way off. It's definitely a lot bigger than fingering weight. So, could be sport, could be DK. I'm leaning more towards DK weight. So, I will continue spinning this exactly as I have, you know, not paying a lot of attention and just letting the wool do what it wants to do. And we'll probably knit a sweater with it, which honestly, with all of the color in this and like all of that, it probably wouldn't have been good for a neutral lace jacket that I want to wear with everything, but I do know which colors I want to keep. I want to keep the periwinkle and the gray and less green, but a little bit of green, just a little bit of the green. Um, and I might even not do a little bit of the green. I might just keep it the um, <clears throat> turquoise periwinkle and gray, dark gray. So I will, that's, that's basically like three, technically three colors. I've got gray, dark gray, and then the periwinkle color. I think that would look best. I think that the periwinkle turquoise mixture is going to match a lot more of what I wear than a purple mixture. So that's what I'm looking at right now. Whew. It's never easy to admit that you fucked something up, but I fucked something up, but, um, Everything happens for a reason. Everything turns out the way it's supposed to turn out. And I will make some kind of sweater for myself because Lord knows I love sweaters. And so this will be my first hand spun hand knit sweater when I eventually finish the yarn and start knitting it, which as you guys can see, I've already got quite, my, quite, quite a handful, quite a handful. Um, I hope that your projects have turned out the way you planned unlike mine. If they haven't, I hope that you can still find a silver lining because we all need that silver lining right now. Um, with everything opening up, I hope that you guys continue to stay safe um, despite everything opening up and best of luck with all of your crafting and until next time, happy dabbling and bye bye